Hi friends, my name is Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Shout by Lori Holtz Anderson. Apparently it's Holtz. There's a poem near the end of the book where she's like, Holtz rhymes with waltz. I'm like, oh. For years I've been calling her Lori Holtz Anderson. Shout is Anderson's life in poems. So for context, Lori Holtz Anderson wrote, well, she's probably best known, I would say, for Speak, although she has written many other things. Speak is the fictionalized account of uh, sexual assault. So Lori Holtz Anderson was sexually assaulted. She is a sexual assault survivor. Her family uh, life situation growing up was interesting. Her father was an alcoholic. He dealt with his bipolar disorder with alcohol and her mother dealt with the trauma of being beaten by him and having to care for the family like entirely on her own shoulders a lot of the time, also with alcohol. So basically it's her childhood, her assault, her rebuilding of herself via a 13 month exchange trip abroad in Denmark where she worked and lived on a farm, how she sort of like pieced her life back together, started writing, the impact that Speak has had on her life and the impact that she can see this has when she meets other people and um, engages with young people and there were some poems in the middle. Did I mention this is told in poetry. She talks about how because her book is so popular she was brought out to a lot of schools and so she um, does this one talk to the first group of students and she talks about, quote, picture this, the author, yep you guessed right, takes the stage for the first presentation and stands in the spotlight, owns the microphone, preaches the facts about power and bodies and sex and violence, speaks up on fire. And then for round two, she opens her mouth to speak, but instead of spitting words, quote, the fire alarm erupts, silencing me. It's the only way Principal Principal, quaking in his shiny black shoes, either terrified of parents or guilty as hell, can think to shut me up, end quote. And then she says, quote, when the screaming alarms are finally silenced, Principal Principal tells me my day is done. Talking about sex and rape and bodies and touching and consent and violence is not appropriate for the children under his care because those things don't ever happen in his school." End quote. And so like the resistance that she met with this book, people who fought for it to be banned, libraries who wouldn't bring it in because they wanted to hold their jobs, the inpouring of young people of all genders who had experienced sexual violence. Then later she was on the set of the film, a big guy working on the electrical says, quote, I am Melinda and I could hear. I could see the little boy hiding inside him. I stuttered, twitching in the electric atmosphere, wishing I had the right words. He wasn't there for a chat. He picked up a roll of black sticky tape meant for insulating and holding things together and said, a lot of us working on this film are like her, cause, you know, he blinked and the tears escaped. It happened to us too, end quote. The ways in which her book had this impact is documented. And then it goes past the book and it talks about like growing old, hitting menopause, uh, her parents dying, and how all of this sexual violence is still relevant. She talks about Me Too. I really, really enjoyed this. Because it's her life, can't really comment on her life, it's her life experience, I want to talk about form. So I mentioned in yesterday's video that I wasn't sure about poetry. If it was a way of distancing because it can be more fragmented and vague and left up to interpretation, or if it was maybe a way to be more intimate and raw. And I think having read through the whole thing, what the poetry does for me in leaving a lot of gaps, because like Tara Westover's memoir Educated is very much about trauma as well. The trauma of living in an unconventional, broken family with parents who 
aren't exactly the best caregivers. Like, it's not ex an exact parallel, but Tara Westover has to go into like great detail and her, her memoir gives us all the information and I feel like leaves very little room for inserting ourselves into the experience. Whereas I think with the poetry, it is open. It is enough that we can sort of place ourselves into that experience either to fill it in with our own experiences that we share with Laurie Holtz Anderson or to get into the headspace of somebody whose experience we don't share. I do think the poetry is great and I think I actually like Shout better than Speak. I liked Speak when I read it the first time and so I was looking forward to rereading it and reading it this time I'm about halfway through and I'm sort of stuck because I'm not enjoying it as much but I and so I was a little bit uh hesitant to start shout because I was like oh boy maybe my my taste has changed and I don't like her writing style um but I loved shout I think it's a very interesting way to document your whole life and your trauma and in many ways I was reminded of Miriam Taves like I find it really hard not to picture Miriam Taves sort of aligning with Laurie Holtz Anderson just in like the sort of unconventional family the mental health the trauma if you like Miriam Taves you will like shout in a way that you may not like speak what was that I think a centipede just walked off the edge of the bench. Spring! Lovely! If you can think of other young adult novels doing interesting things in terms of the writing and the form, leave those for us in the comments down below. If you haven't read it, if you were a fan of Speak as a young person, I'd recommend checking it out. If you're a fan of Miriam Taves, I definitely recommend checking it out. If you're a fan of sort of trauma literature in general, I think Shout might be interesting for you as well. So before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you, patrons, for making videos like this and other long-form content possible. I really appreciate the work that you are enabling me to do and the support that you're providing throughout the month of Veda. If you're interested in becoming a patron, links to that are in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!